Keir Starmer's attempt to change the rules to elect his successor has led to a lot of speculation as to whether he's considering standing down. And we are already hearing rumours of MPs manoeuvring to replace him. Tisky Sour viewers, I'm afraid I must inform you, one of them is apparently Wes Streeting. The register of MPs' interest shows that in the past year, Streeting has raised £45,000 from free wealthy donors. And the Huffington Post has spoken to Labour sources suggesting he's planning a run. They quote a Labour source as saying, People are talking about the Wes Streeting leadership roadshow and whether Keir's office realise it's happening and don't care or don't see that it's happening. He's basically mid-campaign now, even though there is no contest. He is everywhere, doing everything. He's trying to do rounds of union delegation dinners. He looks to be the runner for the right at the moment. This account has been backed up by Owen Jones, who in response to the article tweeted the following... I've been repeatedly briefed that some of Starmer's current and former aides have given up on his prospects and are now pinning their hopes on Wes Streeting, who they hope can be made Labour leader via the Electoral College. For those who are not familiar with Wes Streeting, he is one of the most viciously factional right-wing MPs currently in the Labour Party and the archetype of a career-driven Blairite. Like many right-wingers in the party, Streeting's rise was thanks to organising within Labour students. Their support in 2008 helped him to become president of the National Union of Students, which under his leadership dropped its commitment to abolishing tuition fees. Streeting then went on to work for Progress, Stonewall and PricewaterhouseCoopers before being elected to Parliament in 2015. Once an MP, Streeting became known for committing an inordinate amount of time to sending negative quotes about Jeremy Corbyn to a hostile media. That included in 2016, when on the request of the Bakers Union, Labour banned McDonald's from purchasing a stand at party conference. They'd done that to protest the firm, not recognising the union. Wes Streeting responded with this comment to The Sun on Sunday. I'm exasperated that we should throw away £30,000 worth of sponsorship like this. It smacks of a snobby attitude towards fast food restaurants and people who work or eat at them. McDonald's may not be the trendy falafel bar that some people in politics like to hang out at, but it's enjoyed by families across the country. It's a complete misrepresentation of what was going on. McDonald's was not banned from conference because, they, because the party had negative attitudes about people who eat at McDonald's. It was because the Baker's Union, one of the affiliated unions, was annoyed at McDonald's for not recognising their union. Completely ridiculous, but why ignore the opportunity to deliver a Murdoch paper, a negative story, even if it ignores the facts. Um, a few more reasons you might recognise Wes Streeting. He told Sky in the run-up to the 2017 general election that Jeremy Corbyn would not make a good Prime Minister. That was during the election campaign, and he was one of the right-wing media's favourite contacts to call upon when they wanted an MP to say that Corbyn was soft on anti-Semitism. Ash, could Labour's future really be won led by Wes Streeting. I'm sorry, I'm just still really stuck on falafel bar. Like, <laughs> what's a trendy falafel bar? Like, falafel is like, you know, like cheap food, you know, run by somebody's Turkish uncle. You know, it's not... Like a kebab shop, essentially, or, you isn't know, it? You know, like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, just, it's just like, a, it's just a veggie kebab. It, you know, they had you had to give them something other than halloumi. Um, and I think it just speaks to, and I know this is a bit off topic, the really um, weird and like psychologically loaded politics of food and food as class signifier that we have in this country. But particularly when like the left is trying to litigate like what constitutes, you know, a proletarian habit, what constitutes a middle class one people start saying ridiculous things like there are trendy falafel bars rather than that's the wrap which you can get for a fiver as opposed to a seven pound you know donna meat one um and you know things like lemon or like feta cheese or like basil become like incredibly exotic and rare rather than something which has become a pretty integral part of the british diet over the last 30 years um but that's really off topic it's just something which i feel very strongly about um i think what this shows is that the labor right truly 
is out of ideas and all they've got is a set of aesthetic political gestures. So we're streeting as somebody who, as you said, is a career politician. He's not somebody who came up through the trade union movement or was a community organizer. He's somebody who really committed himself to kind of the most... Uh, low stakes and factionally vicious politics that exists, i.e. campus politics, and won, and was like, okay, I was good at that, I'm going to get into the Labour Party. Um, but what he actually offers in terms of a vision, um, a policy platform, a theory of change, or a view of how the world works, it's, it's scanty, flimsy, verging on non-existent. I'm not saying this as a par. I'm just saying that you would have thought that the Labour right, if they were confident of their powers within the party, they perhaps would have been able to call on an MP with a bit more experience, maybe a bit more to say for themselves, a bit more of, I don't know, say a strategist, somebody who who has given politics and, and what they want to do about it a lot of thinking rather than simply been able to cannily react to various media blow-ups in order to position themselves more favorably uh, in the eyes of you know the country's political editors uh, and you know current affairs producers you know, it doesn't it doesn't speak to me of a, a hugely confident labor right if that's their guy we should potentially put wes streeting's mugshot on our screen more often because it's made us some money Buzzbeard with 899 sending you this, begging you to remove Streeting's mugshot from our screens immediately. And LB comes in with nine quid. Buzzbeard is right. Oliver Camp with two pounds says, Where's Streeting hates Taka Taka, which um, I very quickly Googled, which I think is a falafel bar. Um, or, or a... it's, it's, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I've just never been to like a falafel bar. I've been to like a falafel fast food place where really the prices are comparable with McDonald's. Taka Taka, go Greek. I don't have time to look through the prices. Um, let, let's, let's go to another story about money, which is the same story. Um, I said that Wes Streeting has got £45,000 in the last year. Um, it's interesting to see who that money is from. Um, so according to the Register of Interests, Anthony Watson, who is a financial services entrepreneur, donated £15,000. He had previously bankrolled the Owen Smith campaign when he challenged Corbyn. £20,000 was from Francesca Perrin. She runs something called the Indigo Trust, which is part of the Sainsbury Family Philanthropy Network. And £10,000 was from Lord Wahid Ali, a media entrepreneur. Very interestingly, of the £45,000 donated this year, £40,000 was in August. So £40,000 in a single month. What does Wes know that we don't? Luckily, if there is a leadership election, I own a video which could tank the whole thing. Let's take a look. Ready? Everyone changed their tune after that 2017 general election, didn't they? They've been saying, oh, he couldn't possibly win. He does very well. Finally, they come round to it and, and talk about, oh, potentially he, he was a good leader. Obviously, they memory hold that. Now, no one is allowed to talk about 2017 ever again. Um, Ash, we're obviously Corbyn supporters, but can you imagine um, the Conservatives putting Wes Streeting singing, oh, Jeremy Corbyn into some kind of attack ad? He's going to be running as the guy who was publicly opposed to Jeremy Corbyn and therefore not tainted by 2019. Yeah, I mean, maybe. But that, that's the thing, is that it has also been an attack line which is used on Keir Starmer, which is now you're turning your back on Jeremy Corbyn. Didn't you fight a general election saying he's the right guy to be PM? And that's the, that's the problem with these politicians who really try and distinguish themselves by how not Jeremy Corbyn they really are. Well, you went into two general elections uh, with that guy as your party leader. Um, you know, you stood on his policy platform. And in West Streeting's case, you sang, oh, Jeremy Corbyn with Navarra Media's very own Michael Walker. Um, so, so what changed? Um, it, it does look, I think, self-serving and hypocritical. Um, but, you know, look how happy he looked in that video. I, I think you sort of unlocked his authentic self. He just wants to be a fun Corbynista 
out in the sunshine with you, Michael. He doesn't want to be a Blairite taking swipes at imaginary falafel bars. You know, you had him living his best life. One looks happy when they're standing close to me at London Pride. I don't think we can read too much politically into that. Um, there is one reason that Wes Streeting standing in a leadership election could be good. is because if Clive Lewis, who is another sort of standout option to stand in any future leadership election stands, we could relive, relitigate this legendary Twitter interaction from 2013. This is when Clive Lewis and Wes Streeting were both prospective parliamentary candidates. Clive Lewis says, Blair and Miliband split over future of Labour. Tony baby, stick your fluffy Xmas cards. You had your chance. Stick to your fluffy Xmas cards. You had your chance. Wes Streeting says, didn't agree with a raft of Blair policies or aspects of his article, but surprised to read such a puerile tweet from a PPC. Clive Lewis responds, if you don't like, don't follow, you jumped up turd. <laughs> <laughs> I should say Clive Lewis was initially sharing a, a Blair article, I think, or an article about his comment. Um, can you imagine that in the ne next hustings? I, you know what? I would like a bit more of that. You know, I kind of can't stand the kind of disingenuous politeness of hustings where everyone really hates each other and also themselves. Give me a little bit more of calling each other a jumped up turd, you know? Yeah.